gambling is simply a fun recreational activity, but for others, it can become an all-consuming passion that wrecks lives. Scots spent a record £4.4 billion last year on high-stakes betting machines, nicknamed the crack cocaine of gambling by their critics. As the industry introduces new measures to help prevent people getting into difficulties, one man has told Scotland Tonight's Ewan Petrie how gambling took over and almost ruined his life. It took me into a, a bubble. I was, my life was virtually over. Uh, I was married, lost all that through it, uh, lost a house, uh, and the thing, the places it took me just to get money, you know, it, it, was, it was frightening. For more than a decade, Simon was hooked on fixed odds betting terminals, gaming machines and bookmakers that allow players to bet up to £100 every 20 seconds. I've stood there sweating, shaking, emotional wreck, knowing that this is my last, this is my mortgage money I'm putting in here, and knowing I do it and, and I still do it. I wasn't even watching the, the spin run. I was, I was turning away uh, and then turning back to see if it had won. That's, that's, that's how much it had me. Uh, and it just it ruined, my, it did, it ruined my life. New figures suggest more is being paid into these machines in Scotland than ever before. Last year, Scott spent £4.4 billion on fixed odds betting terminals. That's £200 million higher than the year before. It works out an average £883 per head of population, more than in England and Wales. When the figures are broken down into local council areas, the largest amount spent in the whole of the UK was right here in Glasgow with more than £846 million spent last year. Profits from these machines now outstrip traditional over-the-counter bets. Campaigners want to see local authorities given the power to refuse more shops opening. I also want to see uh, warnings on the machines, I want to see stakes lowered, so you get the right balance between having machines that people can play and enjoy, which a number of people do, but that they're not in a situation where people end up losing huge amounts of money, almost without even realising it, and causing all sorts of problems for themselves, their families and their communities. Measures to help prevent people getting into difficulties were introduced at the weekend, as part of a code for responsible gambling. It puts uh, the players in control on a gaming machine, it lets them set their own limit to the amount of time they play for or the amount of money they spend. It also imposes limits on them, so after 30 minutes the game will stop and people will be asked if they want to continue playing. These are measures that have been developed in association with gambling charities and experts in these issues who say adding a break will give the small number of people who may develop a problem an opportunity to pause. Simon has turned his life around after contacting Gamblers Anonymous. I attend meetings regularly, I get involved, I'm on the phone daily to uh, fellow compulsive gamblers and that helps me uh, a day at a time, it keeps me away for a bit. Well, no one from the Association of British Bookmakers was available to join us this evening, but we are joined from Westminster by the Labour MP Tom Greatrix, and in Edinburgh is the former footballer Kevin Twaddle, who's recovered from a betting addiction that saw him lose more than a million pounds. Thanks for joining us tonight, gentlemen. Uh, Tom Greatrix, you talk about new safeguards, uh, stake limits, messages on the screen, uh, and limiting the number of machines, but if these people are addicted, as we're suggesting they might be, will that actually make any difference? Well, I think it's important that uh, there are proper controls put in place. I mean, I've met a number of my constituents through Gamblers Anonymous and elsewhere who've had their lives absolutely ruined by gambling problems which either started or got worse through these machines. So controls are vitally important. But and the well, if, if it's the messages and screens, for example, can people not just ignore that? Well, this is the, the point about the voluntary code. It doesn't go anywhere near far enough. And indeed, the Secretary of State, Maria Miller, has issued a letter today, just today, saying that she wants it to go, they, want, they need to go much further and it needs to be mandatory. I think there's a lot more that needs to be done to get this balance right, you know, between having machines and people being able to gamble. You know, people do gamble, they enjoy it, whether it's bingo, casino. I have a bet on Fulham winning the cup every year. It's never yet come in. Um, but, you know, that's a very different thing from the way in which these machines end up being, because they're very, very addictive. And you'll find people, uh, you know, Simon's story isn't unique, going into, going into betting shops well, and literally gambling hundreds of pounds and let's, let's, all of their income very quickly. Let's get a sense of that then from, uh, from Kevin Twaddle. Kevin, we hear it talking about the crack cocaine of gambling. Can you see why it's called that? Yeah, definitely. These are the, the kind of things that you see more people in the bookmakers just now playing the, the machines rather than putting bets on the dogs and horses. Um, it's taken over people's lives. Uh, gambling is a, an epidemic and I've said that for quite a bit of time and until I do something about it. So um, what sort of people do you see affected by these machines? Uh, young people, for example? 
Yeah, you see, young, listen, these machines don't take um, any prisoners. These machines take um, your average guy, your average painter to brain surgeons. I've seen, I've seen the, the likes of these kind of people coming indoors. Once you get hooked on these kind of things, Tom's right, there has to be a balance somewhere. Um, but yeah, it affects everybody. It's, it's a, such a, an epidemic just now. So, the, the danger is, uh, of, is, or is there not a danger perhaps, uh, Tom Greatrix, of overstating the problem? Uh, one uh, columnist, an occasional Scotland Tonight guest, uh, Alec Massey, he says these machines pay out £97 for every £100 wagered. Uh, in other words, they're more attractive odds than traditional fruit machines and the national lottery. Are we overstating the problem here? Well, I don't think we are because the way in which the machines are structured, they're very, very addictive. People put very significant amounts of money in very quickly, so the stakes are too high. I mean, if the stakes were lower, I think that would be uh, a, would have a, a big beneficial impact. And I see, you know, since I started getting into this issue three to, about three years ago, when the constituent first contacted me. Now I'm afraid it's a ha my habit. Whenever I go past a betting shop, I have a look in, and you see people on the machines for prolonged periods of time. That's becoming a really big issue in lots of our communities uh, in Scotland and across the UK. So, Kevin, you, you've played the machine. What is it about these machines that are, is quite so addictive? I don't know. It's just, obviously, people with an addictive um, nature go and start playing them. But, I mean, it, it grips anyone. It doesn't just grip people who are, um, like, compulsive kind of people. It grips anyone. And once it's got you, um, you have no chance of getting away. And is there any, is it entirely down to yourself? Is there no restriction on the, on the bookies, for example, or that, that, that they can say, right, you've had enough? That may seem rather naive, but is that just not there? You're just left to yourself? It's never, ever going to happen. I think um, staff are meant to come out and alert people about how long they've been playing it or whether they're losing too much money, but it's never going to happen. At the end of the day, they're, they're there to, to make money, and that's what they're doing. Um, they're not really worried about the carnage it causes to families. Um, and, and especially young people just now, it's so many young people coming through the door mm. and the carnage it causes not just to ourselves but to our families is quite incredible. Uh, so Tom Greatrix, what is it you want to see done then? Well I want the government to go much further in terms of the controls, um, in terms of limits on stakes um, and the, the, the warnings which they've said they will do but they're saying not until £250 which is a lot of a lot of money to lose very quickly um, and that the time limit of 30, 30 minutes is far too long what should the limit be then as far as you're concerned well I, I think in terms of stakes it should be down to the equivalent in in other machines of two pounds rather than a hundred pounds uh, stake because I think that that encourages people to gamble lots of money very quickly I also think in terms of the number of machines there's four machines per shop you've got some places where there are more and more shops opening including more than one of the same chain in the same high street in some cases to e maximize the number of machines local authorities should be able to have the power to determine okay. whether or not there are enough machines in their area to determine whether there's a more of a problem because we've seen in some areas there are significant numbers of machines and I think that's having a detrimental impact on communities and individuals. And Kevin, do you, do you think that would make a difference? I don't know if it would make a difference but certainly um, bringing the limit down for £100 to, to whatever it may be, would, um, it would certainly help but whether it would make a difference to me, I, I'm, not, I'm not very sure. Uh, and Tom Greatrix, finally, what about online gambling? Is there not an issue here that, okay, people might move away from the bookies from these machines but online gambling is there and that's, that's pretty much free reign for anyone? Yeah, there's, I mean, there are lots of different ways of gambling. That's perfectly true. Uh, I think there should be, you know, there's more being looked at in terms of regulation of advertising of gambling. But the thing about these machines in bookies, shops, is that they're there, they're present on the high street. There are more and more of them uh, coming into our high streets. And I think there's got to be, you know, we've got to get the right balance here between allowing people to uh, enjoy them and gamble responsibly, but also to stop people getting into the horrendous problems like Simon and very okay. many others across Scotland. Tom Greatrix, Kevin Twaddle, thank you both for joining us in Scotland tonight.